Welcome to the Highlands Podcast. This is season two. I'm so excited to launch season two. And uh, we've got a special guest today. And I'm a little nervous about what we're going to do, but I'm actually <laughs> turning the podcast over to Pastor Mandy. You and I were on an episode last uh, season talking about life groups. And so we brought you back. Yeah. And so thank you for coming. You're going to be interviewing, I guess, me, because yeah. we're going to talk about a book that I wrote last summer on the book of Acts. It's and going to so, be his greatest regret of his life. <laughs> I know, but why <laughs> did we do on. this? And so uh, I'm looking forward to this, and I pray you'll be encouraged And uh, as we dig into uh, Unhindered, and mm-hmm. we're going to, a verse-by-verse devotional that uh, I pray is an encouragement to those are watching, and maybe even to you. Did you read the book? I read parts of it. Parts of it. Well, <laughs> well thank I mean, you for the I was honesty, given it. I, guess. I was given it a week before this. Wow. I'm not that fast of a reader. Okay. It was a few weeks, but okay, whatever. <laughs> Semantics. So, <laughs> okay. So you, the parts that you did read, yes, was helpful. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're like, I ha- what am I supposed to say? <laughs> mm, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a reading no. endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really, really great, and I. I definitely, I love that I can hear your voice in the writing. Um, I felt that way about the other books that you did as well, the two previous ones that Mm. you did. So, and actually that was going to... Did you read those two or just parts of it? Just parts. (laughs) I am working my way through them. Do you only read parts of books? Is like a thing? I thought that out of this that I was going to get like, oh, wow, like she's really done the, like her (laughs) research on this and like somehow I was going to get into more favor. But I think as as we've started, I've realized that I'm less favor. (laughs) I think the notes that you sent is more than what you read of the book. (laughs) So I'm (laughs) long-winded. Okay. Well, hey, I'm turning the podcast over to you for better or for worse. Okay. Okay. Actually, on the same note as what we were just talking about, um, with hearing your voice and getting to enjoy a lot of your personal anecdotes and stories that you kind of interweave into this book. Um, can you just like give us a brief history of maybe your experience with the church? Cause I, I think a lot of that really is set up at the beginning of this book. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the church. I grew up in church. I grew up in old fashioned church though, like mm. hymns, organ, piano, wearing suits, um, <laughs> dress shoes, like, but there's so many fond memories of, uh, just Sunday school lessons. And yeah. we had a flannel board back in the day yeah. that I don't even know how to describe that to people who don't know what that is, but <laughs> it was the Bible stories and seeing my parents take us to church. I realized that I'm, that was a privilege. Like yeah. not a lot of people Absolutely. listening or even part of our church here at the Highlands had that same experience. Um, but I'm so grateful for it because I think it laid a foundation for me to build off of. Yeah. And it, a love for scriptures, a love for the church. It's not perfect. We'll probably get into that a little bit later, but yeah. Yeah. just some great memories of the church. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that it's cool to be able to get to have that experience, but you're right. It's so unique and it's not yeah. something that everybody gets a chance to, um, live out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you also, in in the midst of these personal touches that we see mm-hmm. throughout the book, you use a lot of humor. I mm-hmm. noticed, and which is great because you're like reading something that you know, like a lot of people approach scripture, and sometimes because they don't know how to approach it, there's this intimidation and it can feel a little dry. Mm-hmm. But I think that you did a great job of making it personal and making it jump off the page. And um, you know. Did you enjoy writing the book? I mean, because it felt like it as I was yeah. reading the pieces that I did read. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there's a, a first in Proverbs that laughter is good medicine, and I don't like going to the doctor. So I'm like, <laughs> all right, let's just do laughter instead. Okay. Um, I I love what I get to do. Yeah. And um, I, sh- I think I shared with our church when I wrote the book, uh, uh, Walking with Jesus through the book of Mark, mm-hmm. that it was something that I, didn't, I had wanted to do maybe when I was in my 60s. Yeah. Right. But yeah. it was a moment where God was like, I want you to do that now. Wow. I'm like, but <laughs> I still have 20 more years to right. learn or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just been a regular rhythm of, um, it, it's kind of more, the way I've seen this book is like, it's kind of my, so I spent a summer in the book of Acts and this book is kind of almost like my journal. Like yeah. I just read through a portion of scripture and then I just wrote what God was teaching me about it. Yeah. And so I believe God has a sense of humor. <laughs> and so <laughs> I s- find a lot of humor throughout scriptures and even in the book of Acts. And uh, so that's what I, I, I just think that if we can laugh and enjoy, because God is so good. Yeah. And even in Psalms, taste and see that the Lord is good. Like yeah. we can just with our senses enjoy what God's doing. And so I hope people laughed yeah. and learned, um, <laughs> but I de- yeah. definitely did enjoy writing it. 
There was definitely some laughter. There was some eye rolls. Of course. There was I'm a dad. <laughs> I, know. So, I know. So much of the dad stuff, and it's funny. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I could see it from a parent perspective, yeah. and then I can see it also from a yeah. daughter perspective. Sure. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. You know, My daughter is currently reading it, and she's already giving me some eye rolls. So, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait till she gets to that last portion oh, then of yeah. your yeah. going into changing a tire. That was funny. <laughs> um in the midst of all this, you know, there is a lot of the humor, sure. but there's also some serious moments or some kind of reality checks, sure. I think. Yeah. Particularly, um, I thought it was interesting um, about how you kind of briefly touched on church hurt, yeah. because so much of the book of Acts is talking about the formation of the church, of and it yeah. gets messy, it does. right? It does. And um, I was just interested to hear, you know, how much has church hurt affected you and your journey and also like how have you been able to kind of get past that yeah no that's that's a great a great thought because I don't I don't want to romanticize or put on rose-colored glasses yeah. about church you yeah. know because sometimes you know because I've maybe grown up and had good experiences largely good experiences I don't want to paint that you know in a broad stroke and say well nobody has or invalidate because there are definitely situations and seasons we've met people that have had serious church hurt yeah okay. sometimes people would 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 call accountability church hurt where maybe mm. a pastor or a leader would try to keep them accountable and then they kind of walked away in a huff and say they got hurt and mm, really mm -hmm. that pastor or spiritual leader was trying to help them grow in their faith yeah. um, so that's a different topic but I think real church hurt so you know I, I I've shared my story before about kind of going through divorce I grew up in a tra uh, tradition that if you were divorced then you could no longer be in ministry yeah. Yeah. and so I have friends uh, and I still they're still friends today who did tell me in a loving way, like, you yeah. can't be a pastor anymore. Like, yeah. ministry is done, game over. Yeah. And so, you know, those were definitely hurtful. Because I actually yeah. felt that tradition I grew up in, I could no longer go to any of those churches because I was an outcast, you know, mm. an outsider. And there were, there were there was a season of several months, which, again, God ultimately used to bring me to the Highlands. Yeah. Because the Highlands was not a tradition that I grew up in. Yeah. Um, and I think because of some of the hurt that I had experienced, um, God used it for his glory to bring me into a, a new tradition, a new yeah. church that said, hey, God's not done with you yet. Yeah. And so I would encourage people who have experienced church hurt that don't put that hurt on God. Like, because mm, we are in, yeah. it, we are imperfect. Yeah. Like people are going to get hurt by us, you know, yeah. and we, we pray God minimizes that. But yeah. the church isn't about the, the pastor or the people. And that's actually the key theme of Acts. Mm. The church is not about any of those things. It's about yeah. the Holy Spirit moving forward. Mm. And he is not going to hurt them. He's yeah. not going to let them down. Yeah. And so I think people who have been hurt uh, by the church legitimately, and I know I'm not invalidating those things, but yeah. really been hurt, I think they really need to seek out uh, more of a feeling of the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. just find that love through Jesus. Like, it's kind of like there was that popular saying, you know, I love Jesus, but hate his church or something like that. And you're like, <laughs> you can't do that. That's impossible. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Jesus gave his life for the church and yeah. he loves the church. Yeah. Um, but the church does hurt people, not because of the Holy Spirit, but because God uses people. Yeah. And so and people how about you? Have you church hurt? I mean, yeah, I, 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 in college, I was okay. kind of, I jumped around from different churches, you know, like one year I'd be at this church for a while sure. and then one year, yeah, you know, yeah. and I, I think in the midst of that though, is actually a really good learning experience yeah. because you kind of have a different flavor in your mouth on different churches. And in a lot of those churches were actually within the four square denomination. Mm, so, gotcha. but even within sure. a single denomination, you get so many different, of course. you know, types of churches and yeah. people. And, um, I think, <laughs> I think if you let it, it, you could embitter yourself towards God, yeah. but you could also do the opposite and allow it to grow you as a as a person and kind of value the maturity that maybe you don't see in other yeah, people and yeah, that you can yeah. go, okay, I can reflect on myself and see how I can um, see Jesus in the midst. And it also, honestly, it gives me hope because in the moments where I am broken, sure. just like I've seen in other people that yeah. may have hurt me, yeah. I go, okay, God can still use anybody and everybody, yeah. no matter where they are. And... I think that that's really powerful. So I think to the person who has experienced or is experiencing church hurt, if they were to come and say, "Hey, how can I do? This? How can I handle this? How can I overcome this?" I would um, actually, and it kind of brings us back to this book. I, I don't think it's necessarily the book, but I think it's getting back into scriptures because one of my favorite verses, and I grew up King James Version <laughs> Church, but one of my my favorite scriptures is in Psalms, where 
it's a great peace have they which love thy law and mm-hmm. nothing shall offend them. Mm-hmm. And I'm not minimizing like offense or hurt, but I think sometimes we allow these things to just completely mm-hmm. overwhelm us yeah. and consume yeah. us. Yeah. But if we were to spend more time in scripture, praying, yeah. being guided by the spirit, yeah. Um, yeah, the hurt still hurts, but yeah. we can begin to move past and not carry. Cause sometimes we, yeah. we kind of like Pilgrim's Progress, we kind of continue to carry that yeah burden. And I've met people who they're like four churches removed from that hurt Mm. 25 years ago and they're still carrying it. Yeah. And so it's like, well, at some point you're going to have to let that go and move on because again, God's forgiven us so much. So we need to be willing to forgive others. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's really, it's really, um, it's like, it's a piece of life. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's not, it's not avoidable. And so I think, if we press into that. And two, I think we, it's a combination of like, if we don't interact in those ways, if we never get to a point where like we're being real with each other and our relationships with other believers in the church, Mm -hmm. then we're missing out on a piece of, of being a part of God's church. Like, it's like, you can't have the church and not really be a part of it. And if you're a part of it, inevitably there's going to be moments of of hurt that you have to work through. And, but I do think something you said was important. Like if we are grounded in scripture mm-hmm. and our relationship with God, it's not that those hurts go away, right. but it doesn't rock our faith. Right. Exactly. And if we're like, so I think sometimes we make the mistake of like idolizing pastors mm-hmm. and true. leadership that we, if they fall off or if they hurt us or if something happens, then it's like, it totally rocks everything we believe. Yeah. And that's a, that, that to me is probably more of a, um, statement on how deep you've been able to, to really get into your faith. You know, we can't keep living in this shallow faith forever. We have to eventually get deeper and deeper. Yeah. It's devastating to hear people even close to me that say they'll never go to church again because of what happened maybe in their youth or young adult days. Yeah. And it's like, well, it, it wasn't it wasn't Jesus that hurt you. Yeah, it was that it person. was people. Like yeah. it was, f- f- you know, uh, frail, flawed humans that hurt you. But yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. devastating. It is it is interesting to be a part of the church of God, and mm-hmm. I think um, it's interesting because I feel like Acts really gives us a um, blueprint. And I think you even said you said in your book, mm-hmm. the book of Acts lays out a blueprint for what churches are supposed to look like mm-hmm. and how they're supposed to act, serve, love, and give. Yeah. What are some specific examples of how you think that we can do that maybe as the Highlands sure. or even as individuals of yeah. like coming into a church setting? Like, How can we live that out? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I, so I believe the church is the hope of the world. I, mm-hmm. I believe we see that all throughout Acts. I, I don't believe there's another, and we could say organization as far like a church yeah, yeah. could bring as much hope, peace, and unity like the church. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this is an election year. Well, that's mm-hmm. not bringing unity to our country, <laughs> you know. Uh, but ev- even if your favorite organization, you know, they have a great mission, like there's still going to be people that are not for it or mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. want to, like you know, Pepsi's not bringing unity because people like Coke, you know, like there's just so many things that divide us. Definitely sports teams Coke. aren't bringing unity. <laughs> <laughs> sports teams aren't bringing unity. Like, so the church really is the light of the world. And so when I said that, as far as a blueprint, what I'm hoping, my bold prayer for our church here at the Highlands Mm -hmm. for 2024 is that we would model and resemble a New Testament church. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is when you look at Acts 2, particularly the end, so 3,000 people get saved at the day of Pentecost. And then you have verses 42 through 47 really describe what a week looks like. Mm -hmm. So we've said here, Sundays are good. Like connecting in on Sundays are good. Um, being in a corporate worship service, I believe is so important. So important. Um, but at the same time, Sundays are good, but every day is better. Yeah. So like, you know, you're our group's pastor. And yeah. so we have life groups that meet every every week yeah. or, or rather every day. And so what's really awesome to see is that people are growing, they're mm-hmm. connecting, they're mm-hmm. serving, um, and they're bringing unity. But I don't think it's just about us feeling good about each other. Yeah. I think that when you find not, I think when you read the book of Acts, you'll see that this united church, they actually go evangelize the world. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. we're not just here to be a Christian club. We're here to go reach people who, yeah. who actually without the influence of the Holy Spirit through us would be spending an eternity in hell. Yeah. So that's the key with the church. Yeah. And so 
unfortunately, we go back to that church hurt. Yeah. They weren't following the blueprint because mm-hmm. they weren't following what the Holy Spirit was leading. They began to step out in their flesh. Yeah. And then they began to hurt people. That's what happens all the time. Yeah. When we step out in our flesh, we hurt yeah. people because that's our nature. Yeah. And so I think the Holy Spirit guides and, and gives us this framework to lead from. We're not going to do it perfectly. No. But I think we're going to um, have... Um, you know, this perfect plan with flawed people and we give the results to God yeah. and we trust in him. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's great. And I, I think kind of what you said is perfect is like, it's a process, Yeah, you know, it's yeah. a process that takes kind of our lifetimes. Yeah, it's and, true. And I think if we resign ourselves to that, it becomes so much more pleasurable yeah. than like trying to meet this like perfection Status that is just never going to happen. And some everyone has like their own idea of what their church is. Yeah. You know, for some people oh, it's which like makes it extra complicated. Exactly. <laughs> you know, for some people like they want to have you know direct access to the pastor because that's what church is. Or some yeah. people like, well, we need to have constant fellowship. That's what their church is. Or for some mm-hmm. people it's like we need to do outreach all the time. Like, and that's what church is. And so I think it's balance. Yeah. I think that we have to find all a balance of you know even in Acts uh, five where these early apostles, the, the pastors of the church are like, we need help. There's mm-hmm. so much, pe- so many people to care for. Yeah. So they called in, um, these, these six that said, Hey, we're going to help care for the widows and care for the needs of the yeah. church. And cause that's part of the church, yeah. but also preaching is and yeah. worship is and giving and yeah. tithing. Like all yeah. those things are part of church. Sometimes we like to cherry pick which ones we like, cause those are our favorites. The irony though, of what you're saying is that, and it's, oh, man, is that I, I often see this where people come like, I wish that we did more of this or I sure. wish we did more yeah. of that. And they have like this, this focus. Yeah. And I, and to me, I'm like, that's the Holy Spirit telling you that that's what he's calling you to. Mm. You can't keep like expecting somebody else to be able to do all of it. Yeah. Like we can't, right. we as pastors, even our pastoral staff here, like we can't do every right. single thing that God is probably calling right. our community to. Right. Right. But if, if like, so I'm like, okay, you're yeah. right. We do need to yeah. do more of that. You should Go. do more yeah. of that. <laughs> and that's not the answer they're expecting. They're like, wait, no, no like, you're, whoa, whoa. yeah, you're paid to do that. It's like, <laughs> no, that's not how this yeah. all works. And so, yeah, we like to kind of cherry pick what we prefer, but yeah. all of it's good. Yeah. Fellowship is yeah. great. I mean, you're leading groups of like, we're, trying to create points of growth and connection and impact. But at the same time, it's, we can't forsake, you know, uh, corporate gathering yeah. or we can't forsake For sure. evangelism or we can't forsake, you know, baptism, yeah. having Lord's table yeah. together. Like all those different things are really important. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the body of Christ. Yeah. We're all so unique and we're all called in such yep. particular ways. Yeah. And God uses that together yeah. to make the full body of Christ. And again, there's very few organizations that would be able to do that yeah. in the world yeah. to bring people's giftings, supernatural giftings together. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, you also had a couple of chapters where you're kind of talking about convenience. And I think this lends itself to, to even what we were just talking yeah. about, because, you know, our modern Western society, you know, we have this, this idea of convenience yeah. is key yep. and like and king and king yeah. over our lives which i i think is quite contrary to scripture oh, yeah. and it's uh it's very dissonant to hear that you yeah. know like yeah. it, it takes a lot even even myself like i've been fasting recently yeah and i can't tell like i'm a cre- creature of comfort sure. you know like i like yeah. my comfortable things and so when i'm fasting like um Caffeine, which yeah. to me, it's not about the like caffeine that I get. It's like a warm cup of coffee in yeah. my hand. It feels good. And yeah. like, it makes me happy. And it's like, there's a convenience to it and there's a comfort to it. And mm-hmm. I think we get caught up on that. And yeah. I think the enemy uses it. Oh man. Oh yeah. man. He uses yeah. it so much. And mm-hmm. I love because you ta- you address it a little bit in this. And I love how you talk about how Jesus calls the church to live in a space of being inconvenienced. Yeah. Um, do you think that the Western church and in individual believers of the church can experience 
true transformation if we continue to stay in those convenience bubbles? Yeah, no, those are that's great thoughts. A great question, and the short answer is no. <laughs> yeah. You know, you you find you read in the Gospels of John where Jesus is is calling when he ever he calls disciples, it's never to convenience. Mm -hmm. So one of his most more famous fa phrases of how basically what he's calling them into is saying, "Hey, pick up your cross, deny mm -hmm. yourself, and follow mm -hmm. me." Mm -hmm. And in John six, it says the disciples, many of the disciples, followed him no more. Because yeah. they're like, actually, I want my convenience. It's funny you mentioned fasting because uh, Amy and I, we're, we're going to be fasting a little bit later this spring for a, a big thing in our church. And Amy and I have already committed we're going to do a juice fast. Mm. And, and you know, as a pastor, I should be telling you, like, I can't wait for it. But actually, it's the opposite. I'm dreading it. <laughs> I know. And, and it's not because of the fasting. It's because of the inconvenience. Yeah. Um, it's going to, like, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking, like, I'm not going to have any solid foods. Like, I'm not going to have my favorite foods. I'm not going to have food. <laughs> like, I'm just going to do <laughs> juices. And uh, But. I think the point of fasting and the point of the Christian life is to remove us from comforts and yeah. conveniences because yeah. that is when we are inconvenienced and uncomfortable, that's where I believe, and we see this throughout the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit resides. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we like to say, all right, I'm on my couch living for myself. So Holy Spirit, come fill me. Yeah. And it's like, that's not where he is. Yeah. And I, I've shared, I, I, it's not original with me. I heard it from a pastor, but um, I heard him say, God doesn't bless people. He blesses places. Mm. And you find this throughout the Old Testament where Bethel or other places where God would bless and he would yeah. say, put up a stone right here because yeah. this is where my presence was. Yeah. And I think often we think, all right, God, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I want, what I want, live what I want, go where I want. And you bless that. And God's like, that's not how this mm. works. And so I think one of the, the spaces that God blesses is in discomfort, yeah. but we don't like to go there. <laughs> we, we don't like to spend time there because we're like, get me out of town, go back to comfort. Bill, yeah. and that's where I want to be. And when we look throughout the book of Acts, I can't find or think of off the top of my head right now any any passages where the early church was comfortable and God blessed. Yeah. It's always in prison. <laughs> you know, it's always <laughs> yeah. uh, it, when when Paul is, is being stoned and shipwrecked, and it's always when the disciples are being tormented and persecuted. Yeah. That is where God's blessing is. Yeah. And by the way, it's also where they're praying all night. Yeah. Like, I mean, we talk about prayer and talk about even reading scripture. Yeah. We are just so um, blessed yeah. with all the different ways. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was reading my, my Bible reading uh, in Leviticus recently. Mm -hmm. And when you read Leviticus 16, you read 34 verses of what Aaron had to do to enter the presence of God. I know take a bath so and clean his clothes, make sure it's the right clothes, make sure it's the right this, make sure it's on this date and this time and yeah. 34 verses of rules to enter God. And then you contrast that with Hebrews 4 where it's like boldly enter the throne of grace. Yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah. And so it's so simple for us, but we don't uh, step into that yeah. And because we're too comfortable yeah. or I don't want anybody to see me pray. What if they think I'm weird? Like, And it's like, really, that's like our baseline yeah. Yeah. of comfort. Yeah. I don't want anybody think I'm weird. And so I, what you'll, what we'll find in the book of Acts is people stepping out of their comfort zone and God radically blessing. And what's interesting mm. is anybody, anybody can step out of the comfort zone. Oh, yeah. It's not about a gifting. Yeah. It's not about even like a pastor, a yeah. role or title. It's any follower of Jesus can step out of their comfort zone. And when we do that, I think God blesses far beyond we can ever imagine. Yeah. Yeah. My mom always used to kind of like warn me. I don't, I wish I could remember the exact phrase that she would say, but essentially it was like, like, don't get too comfortable because the second you like start to live in that, yeah. God's going to like yeah. change it. He's going to make sure that you don't stand there because he yeah. loves us yeah. because he loves us. And he doesn't want to stay us to stay there because when we become complacent, that's when we become stagnant. I think in yeah. our faith too. Yeah. And, and I think we become in incapable of really living out the great commission. Yeah. Like how do I go and tell the world that's if true. I'm comfortable? That's true. That's there's right. no way. Yeah. There's no desire. Like, it, it's it's easier now because we yeah. have like social media. Right. I can just sit in front of my phone and say, "Oh, I'm carrying right. out the Great Commission" because I said it on my whatever I my shared story. A YouTube link. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so step like, out my face. <laughs> but it's like, are we really like, where are we pressing the boundaries of our yeah. comfort and our convenience at to a, be able to? Had a professor in college say that in ministry, God will often and this is anecdotal. It's not in scripture, but he had seen over 20 plus years of ministry that God had changed. Uh, ministry and assignments and everything's every 18 months. Oh, and he just, it, responsibilities changed or roles changed or the church changed. And he always felt that that was to keep him from being 
comfortable mm-hmm. because sometimes we can just sit in our in our zone mm-hmm. for the next 10 years. Yeah. Like I, I remember talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, pastoring is easy. Yeah. He's, he had done it for 10 years and he got it down. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know if pastoring should, should be, easy. Ever be easy. I don't know if following Jesus is ever easy. Yeah. Yeah. Like we might know and get into some habits and good disciplines, but yeah. that doesn't make it easy. Yeah. And so yeah. read, read a book of Acts again. <laughs> like <laughs> There is no easy way to live the Christian life. Yeah. Yeah. Also in the book of Acts, and obviously, therefore, also yeah. throughout your book, is this idea of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, I mean, you can't you can't read the book of Acts without encountering the Holy Spirit every right. few pages, oh my goodness, right? Yeah. And um, can, I just I would love for you to kind of tell us a little bit about the role that the Holy Spirit has taken in your life and in your yeah. journey thus far. No, that's a great question. So I the tr- the tr- church tradition I grew up in was not a lot about the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Like we heard about him and yeah. we would even say like be filled with the Spirit. But as I look back, I'm like, well, I don't know that we were the, given the full weight of that. Mm. Um, and it, honestly, it, it was actually, as I shared earlier, finding my way to the Highlands, not knowing anybody, mm-hmm. that I really began to learn and grow in uh, first some knowledge of the Holy Spirit, but yeah. then in a practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what I love about this idea of the of the Holy Spirit is that Man, for 30 years, the first 30 years of my life, um, again, I grew up in great traditions, yeah. and I, yeah. I love the foundation I was I was given, but I, I, we were missing it. Mm-hmm. I've actually talked to some friends who kind of grew up in similar traditions, and I was like, man, like that was something that I wish we would have maybe grown more in or learned more yeah. of, yeah. Um, because I believe as I've learned more and 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 even in the Book of Acts, like understood the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe it's like this missing element to a victorious Christian life. Yeah. I think people who try to live their Christian life without the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about like being filled or being baptized or all those doctrines. I'm talking about guided by the Holy Spirit on a day by day through mundane living. I think that they're missing out on what God has fully intended them to. And I think that it was, it should have been apparent to us when Jesus is like, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Like, oh, the Holy Spirit's going to be like essentially this like replacement for physical Jesus that's going to continue to guide us. Like we should perk up and be like, we want that. Yeah. Like, how can we? How can we be followed or guided by that? Yeah. And so, for my journey has been really not until here, uh, our founding pastor here, Pastor Ken, was just really instrumental. Actually, my I didn't know she would be my mother in law, but my mother in law yeah. actually I prayed over me to be to baptize me in the Holy Spirit, mm. um, and those were really key moments uh, for me. But it was this almost unlocking of, yeah. uh, of of a power that I didn't know I had access to. Yeah. Um, and I think when you read Acts, you'll find, like you said, the Holy Spirit on every page throughout. He's one of the key themes of this yeah. book. Um, and if and and going back, you know, go back to church hurt, go back to yeah. inconvenience. Yeah. We don't move past any of those without the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah. And so he's the one that guides and leads and really can even destroy some of those strongholds. So Absolutely. I we the Holy Spirit is such a key part. And and by extension, I mean there's there's this piece of like us mm-hmm. and like my individual relationship with the Holy Spirit and how I approach mm-hmm. that. But there's also kind of goes back to this church idea. Like what does it look like and what role should the Holy Spirit play in a large community setting? Yeah. Yeah, I know that those are those are good questions, and I think those are things that we wrestle with here. Because, for example, um, we're we're just doing an Acts series uh, in our church, then so we're going to look at the power of Acts, mm-hmm. and so two of the messages are going to be the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. One of those messages I'm going to talk through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But mm-hmm. how do you how do you have you know hundreds of people on a Sunday? go through that. Yeah. And so some of it is through our, through life groups. Yeah. Some of it's going to be through some of our uh, discipleship classes and maybe some smaller settings. Yeah. Uh, last year, maybe 16 months ago, we had a, a pastor come in and he actually did a whole seminar on the Holy Spirit. We actually, yeah. uh, we saw, I think, a hundred people that were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Wow. Um, and so I, but I think it's putting a priority and emphasis on that. Yeah. Um, and not just the, the practice of the baptism of the spirit, but really the practice of presence, practicing the presence of the Holy Spirit every day. Yeah. And I think it's reminding, uh, you know, I think you and your dad did a message recently and, and just even in those messages mentioning the Holy Spirit, like yeah. how powerful he is and yeah. how we can change our outlook and our attitude and yeah. just constantly. Cause we, we, we celebrate what we're thinking about mm-hmm. and what we talk about. And so if we continue to talk about the Holy Spirit, 
people will understand like, man, that actually is quite important for my life. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's interesting too. And I think you kind of like hinted at it a little bit, but it's like, there's this, there can be, there can be a little awkwardness around sure. the co- concept of the Holy Spirit because like it's so intimidating yeah. um, to go, okay, there's, like, he's not here, but he's here. Yeah. Like, I feel him. Right, but right. Is that an emotion? Is right. that mental? Is it... Fi- is it like goosebumps on my on my, yeah. my arms? Like, is that the Holy yeah. Spirit? Yeah. Or we've had, like, church hurt moments sure. where, like, someone comes up and says, yeah. the Holy Spirit yeah. told me, and then yeah. they say something that, to you that you're like, what? Yeah. You yeah. know? And so I think, I think there can be, like, a lot of weird emphasis sure. on, like, how to utilize the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I think it's so important for us to be well-versed in the book of Acts as well as certain key New Testament yeah. books because it really kind of directs and guides us in that way. And I, yeah. I really loved what you said um, in this book. You said, the point is not the gifts. The point is the desire. Mm. And I'm sure it makes more sense in the context of that whole passage that you wrote. But I just really felt... Like that jumped off the page to me because so often there's like this dogmatic, like you have to have the gifts of the spirit. And like that comes first Mm -hmm. before people even understand who the Holy Spirit is. And it's like, how can I have a gift from somebody I'm not even sure I know is like, can understand is there. So it's like, I like how you're talking about like, it needs to be a part of our daily life because the more and more we invite the Holy Spirit into our daily life, into our conversations, into how we understand who God is and his presence in our Mm -hmm. life, then we can start to go, okay, God, like I want to step out of my comfort zone. I want to get into what, what, what are you offering me now? You know, I'm open handed to that. And I think that's really important. The point of what you mentioned about, you know, writing, the point is not the gifts, it's the desires, because often too, the other another facet of that is that you know where we live in a society where we are instant gratification mm-hmm. showy mm-hmm. building a brand mm-hmm. like having a platform and so often even in good things we can use our giftings for our own benefits yeah. and our own glory yeah and so I think sometimes we jump into say well what gifts do I have what gifts did God give me so that I can like tell people like I have a word of knowledge for you. I, yeah. I'm, I'm working in a prophetic voice. And and, and we're, those are good things, but sometimes we use them into our own glory. Yeah. We're, we want people to know, like, oh, wow, if you go to him, he's going to, like, know things about you that nobody knows. Like, that's he's amazing. Yeah. But that's not the point. Like, yeah. the point of throughout scriptures, not just acts, is our, always our heart. Yes. So it's never about tithing. It's about our heart. It's never yeah. about um, following spiritual disciplines. It's about our heart. It's never yeah. about the gifts of the spirit. It's always about our heart. Yeah. And so if we have the right desire and then the gifts things, the giftings do come, then they'll be coming out of a pure heart. Yeah. By the way, since church has kind of been a, a central theme of this conversation, when spiritual leaders, pastors, and disciples of Jesus mm-hmm. work from a pure heart, mm-hmm. church would actually go down. Go away, yeah. Yeah, it would, it would, because we're not trying to hurt or, because I think church hurt uh, at the core of many instances is pastors mm-hmm. use people for mm-hmm. their own platform. Yeah. And so yeah. they'll say they're the stepping stone for greatness mm-hmm. in their mind. And so the people that got hurt, church hurt were part of that stepping stone. Yeah. But if that pastor or church leader was working from a pure heart and yeah. working on the desires of their heart and placing those before the Lord, I think that you would see some of those things, those things be minimal Absolutely. because we really are coming from a pure heart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So this book, you titled it Unhindered. Mm -hmm. Um, And at the end of your book, uh, you say, you know, I believe at times the greatest hindrance to the gospel, honestly, is Christians. And I feel like, again, like it just all is, it's it's kind of interwoven throughout this whole book. And and I'm just curious when you say that, like, what do you mean exactly by, you know, the greatest hindrance to the gospel can be Christians? Well, thank you for bringing that line in because we're roasting Christians and we're like, no, please buy the book. That, that's, you know. Um, <laughs> I just want to get it all out there. Yeah, no there surprises you go. No when surprises, you get this book. No, no offenses. Be offended up front and that way you're not offended while, while you read. Um, there's two, two reasons um, that I, I wrote that and, and even think through that. Um, the first reason is that we're a hindrance to the gospel because we don't share the gospel. Mm -hmm. So if God has given us the good news and we don't share it, then just naturally we are hindering Mm. because we are all called. And another key theme of Acts is evangelism. Yeah, People were never saved or called into a church just to be comfortable. We talked about that. They were called to go out. Yeah, And so if we stop 
uh, sharing, advancing, evangelizing, then we naturally just hinder the gospel. Yeah. But I also think another facet of that is that we hinder the gospel through our lifestyles. Yeah. Um, we choose comfort over following Jesus. We yeah. choose our own platform over the giftings of the spirit, or we choose to, um, you know, not deny ourselves, not yeah. take up our cross, not follow. And so, uh, when I, the the phrase unhindered that word is actually the very last phrase of acts mm. um, in the stand, the version I wrote are used for this devotional it's translated without without hindrance but it's essentially this Greek word akalodos mm. akalidos um, that it's only found one time in the whole Bible mm. in this passage wow. and it is all a complete reference to the gospel mm. so the gospel really is the only thing that should go unhindered yeah. without hindrance. Now we substitute that with our desires. Well, I want my desires to go unhindered. Yeah. Well, I want my political pa- platform to go unhindered. I want my branding to go unhindered, but that's not the theme of this yeah. book or all of scripture. It really is the gospel. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, again, I don't want to put a, uh, I like to laugh and we, we've had laughs and I like yeah. to have humor, but it really is a serious note that I believe that we will stand in judgment when we see, when we're in heaven yeah. and there will be people that will spend an eternity in hell because we chose to hinder the gospel mm. and that's a sobering thought uh, yeah. because god has given us such good news to share yeah. and so that's why it's it to be honest with you it's frustrating yeah. when christians choose comfort and convenience or mm. christians choose well if i don't get a direct line to the pastor if i don't have uh, this relationship if i don't have this friendship then i don't i don't want that i don't want that church or i don't want to to be part and it's like that's not the point yeah the point is always it always has been the gospel yeah. and so i think for us we can hinder by not sharing but we can also hinder by saying i'm going to live a life i'm going to say i'm a christian but i'm just going to live a life that's contrary and then p- our friends, our family that are seeing us are like, well, what's different about you? Like, why do I need what you have? Yeah. I can save my time, money, effort, energy, and not do that. Yeah. And I'll say I'm a Christian because that's what you're doing. Yeah. And so I think those are a couple of ways that we hinder the gospel. Conversely, though, let's put a positive spin on this. I don't, I, for some reason, and it still boggles my mind, I read through the whole book of Acts. I don't know why God chose people Mm. to share his good news. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. (laughs) Like God can do anything. Um, He raised his son from the dead. Yeah. He's created all things. All things, the uh, Colossians says, is consisted by him. Yeah. And yet he chose us. Yeah. The people who cause church hurt, who cause problems and (laughs) issues. And I'm sure so many headaches for God. I caused so many headaches for God. (laughs) God's like, what in the world? Like I get what is happening? (laughs) And so I, I I don't understand why God did that, Yeah. but we're amazed and we're honored. Yeah. And we take that as a priority and and a responsibility, but also a blessing that God has saved us. Like, like one day my wife, she's going to hate that I say this, but, uh, (laughs) She was Sorry. every time she, 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 she tries to eat healthy and, but which is fine. My, my problem is when she tries to get me to eat healthy <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't want to eat healthy. Like I'm fine. Yeah. And she's like, but I want you to live a long time. But I'm and I'm like, again, I love my family, love yeah, my yeah, two daughters, yeah. but I'm like, but when I die, I'm going to be in heaven. Like, so yeah. what's the problem? No I'm like, <laughs> I'm good either way. Like, and in my way, eat what I want and then I'll meet Jesus. And yeah. she's like, but not too soon. And I'm like, well, we don't know his timing. <laughs> you know, I try to put a spiritual <laughs> thing on it. But at the same time, all of us only have a certain amount of days. And we want to make the most of it yeah. because we will one day spend an eternity in heaven. Yeah. But not everyone will um, will be able to do that yeah. because maybe they reject it or maybe worse, we didn't share. Yeah. So I actually wrote in uh, Acts towards the end of the book, Probably the saddest passage, I think, in the Bible is when Paul is sharing the gospel to the king and he's like, almost, you persuaded me. Ugh. Almost. Yeah. And I just, and I, I bet Paul, and I, I don't know, it's not in scriptures, but I, I, I wonder if Paul kept beating himself up because mm. he was in prison at that time mm-hmm. of like, what could I have said that would have changed his mind? Yeah. Like, could I have done this? Could I have used this story? Could yeah. I have used this word? Because that was Paul's passion. And I love how the book of Acts ends with the gospel through all the trials and tribulations of this whole book of Acts. It still went unhindered. And so I love that. That's awesome. Well, as we wrap this up, what is one thing that you hope that as somebody reading this book, what they could get out of it? What's something that you hope they'll take away? Even if it's just one thing, 
What's the hope? We talked about a lot of a lot of things throughout our time together, but if there's one thing, it's um, I think I write about it in here. But um, when I wrote the the book Walking with Jesus, going through the book of Mark, mm-hmm. uh, I had some people come up and say, Pastor Jeremy, we just we got to know you more. Yeah. Reading that book. Yeah. And I and they were kind, and I know they were mean, being complimentary about it. But I, I looked and I was like, oh, I think I failed mm. because I don't I don't want to write to have people get to know me better. Yeah. I want to write so people get to know the Lord and His Word better. Yeah. And so my hope is that through this book, that people would really understand and and even see a book of the Bible come alive. Yeah. That it's not just I believe the Bible is timely and timeless. That it has incredible, practical, relevant truths today, even yeah. though it was written thousands of years ago. And so my prayer is that people would love God's word more and that yeah. they would, um, even after this, that they would find another book to read yeah. and, and continue reading on in the scripture because it is full yeah. of life. Yeah. So I love that. Well, it's awesome what I did read of it, <laughs> but I have to know before we end, I have yeah. to know there yeah. was a chapter where you said that you were talking about a friend who used to <laughs> preach sermons sure. to a stuffed animal. Yeah. Were you, was that like a, <laughs> my friend, but it was really you? I, I see how you can think that, <laughs> but no, this is a 100% true story, Got not it. about me. My friend's name is Andrew, and uh, he was, so for me growing up, I was insanely shy. And so the idea of standing even before stuffed animals <laughs> to, like, to, no. to speak, publicly <laughs> speak, like I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And so this was not me or a friend. It was a friend named Andrew that Got it. he had Got done it. that. So, okay. but yeah, thanks for catching I'll, that. Uh, I'll pretend to believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mandy. And for what a great time. And we hope you get uh, a copy of this unhindered. We go verse by verse through the book of Acts. And uh, my prayer is that this conversation was encouraging to you if you liked what you heard or maybe didn't like what you heard (laughs) like check out this book and let's go through acts together because here what i like to tell people is when you read this book and you read acts you actually read two books at the same time Mm, two for one two for one so anyway hey we'll see you next episode of the highlands podcast again welcome back to season two we can't wait to see you next time make sure you share this with a friend like and subscribe our YouTube channel on Spotify, wherever you find your podcast. I can't wait. We've got a lot of great episodes lined up for you in season two. Can't wait to, can't wait to see you again next time. Take care. Have a great week.